Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, thank you very much for being on Electric. I really appreciate that. Thank you for subscribing. If you're new here, uh, you're welcome. This is Electrica, and we talk about electrical stuff. My name is David. Thank you very much. Now, today I have an interesting topic, changeover switch. So, uh, changeover switch, uh, it's very interesting in that it plays a very significant uh, role in our you know, power usage today, okay? So, so many people out there, uh, you know, they need constant power supply uh, at all time, okay? And to do that, you need uh, a change of a switch such that if you do the power supply sheds, then uh, your main power or your alternative power comes in, okay? But how does it come in? By use of change of a switches. And this can be either manual or auto, okay? And we talked about uh, manual changeover and the money changeover looks like this. Of course, what you're seeing out there might not be exactly this, but it will look like this, where you have, you know, where you have two positions here, you have one, zero, and two. So if your power sheds, you just come and move it from one position and to the other position, okay? The alternative power could be generator, could be solar, when you're using an inverter, or anything else, okay? But I felt like we can talk about auto changeover, and as right uh, the comment, uh, the, uh, the title reads, uh, "What you need uh, for your changeover switch." I know many of you out there, you need, you love to build your own because it can be really costly. Okay, so before we go any further, uh, I need to stress something. Now, since we are talking about uh, change of a switch, what we are going to do is today, let us talk about what you need in details for that change of a switch. Then uh, we can you know, bring the next video uh, to explain the wiring, and the wiring diagram, or we can put a control diagram and power diagram so that you are able to understand that. Then the other one, we can do a practical video now, okay? That will be great. All right. Now, since we're going to talk about uh, auto, there are some, you know, devices, components that you're gonna need to, for you to have this uh, fully function automatic changeover. And one of those, you of course need contactors. Okay. Of course, since you're changing from uh, main to generator, need two contactors okay and any contactor will do uh, what matters is the current demand for your supply okay so if you calculated it and you know your current demand then that will give you the size of your contactor okay then the other thing is that you're gonna need a phase monitor okay you're gonna need a phase monitor which looks like this. And this phase monitor uh, plays a very significant role in this system. So you know, most of our powers uh, are not really, uh, you know, uh, stable. You have variation in these phases all the time, power keep on fluctuating. And that's not good really for your, you know, for your gadgets and your installation. So that's why you need a phase failure. You can do without it, but in these modern days, you have to do what it takes to keep your installation, you know, safe. So you have this, it's a three-phase phase monitor, it's two way it can work either way, single phase, a three-phase, and what will help you is that it will take in the three-phase supply, so, and it has got some parameters here, over voltage, under voltage, okay? And that will give you, you know, a chance uh, to monitor all these parameters. If your voltage goes down at a certain threshold, it cuts off power. If it goes up, some threshold it cuts off power. Okay, so you understand that. Uh, and yes, it will help. Okay. All right. So the other thing that you also include in that number three that will be a relay. Okay. And by the way, for phase monitor, you only need to connect a phase monitor on the main supply because most of the generators that come. Uh, they already have 
this kind of device is equipped with it inside its car, okay? All right, now, you need this guy here, a relay. So most of the gadgets I'm talking about here have individual videos for, uh, for them. I'll put all the links in the description, okay? So a relay is here. So you have a relay here, and this relay also plays a very big role. Remember when we talked about a relay in our previous videos, we talked about the role of a relay, okay? Because it has multi contacts, so you can use it what you want. So in this case, in the generator, we there is a time when, you, when the power goes and then you need to send a signal to generator to start. So we use a relay to do all that. And also, we use it for interlocking, okay? For, you know, double interlock, we do that, okay? So, but the other also crucial role is that uh, you have a timer, okay? That I will add here. You have a timer, and this timer, it's a delay. Uh, it's a delay timer, okay? Now, let me give you an example. If your power is normal, working normally, and then it goes off. So when it goes off, the generator will come in, of course. It will uh, add the signal, and then it will come on. So when it comes on, we don't want to load that generator instantly because it will start on load. So that's why you put a timer to delay it. But hey, look. So that means that this timer, it's actually supplying the gen contactor, okay? Because when the gen starts, it will give it supply, okay? So that means that without a timer, you'll be supplying the gen contactor directly, okay? And that means that it will start on loading. That one will, you know, run your load, but also it's not healthy for a contactor, okay? And also, so this timer is weak. The, the, the terminals are very weak. They can't supply a contactor. If you have a contactor like this one of 30 amps, it's okay. This timer can handle that. What about if you're supplying a contactor of around 150 amps or 100 amps? So you will need to use the timer to supply the contactor, and then the timer will supply the relay. Okay? All right. So these are the main components. Uh, that you need to, you know, to construct the change of the swing that we are going to do uh, in a few days to come, okay? So, much on the phase monitor. So, there is also this, this is a phase monitor also, but that was as a sequence monitor, okay? So, if you have any drive, uh, like you have a three-phase drive or a pump, which you know that... Uh, uh, it will be affected by, by, by the direction. So instead of using this, you can use this that it, it has a sequence so to protect it. Because if your pump, uh, you know, uh, your kit up of the supply changes the, uh, you know, uh, the lines, and then it, uh, your system will reverse. So that doesn't affect all, uh, all other things apart from the drives, uh, the motors, okay? So if you put this, then, it will not allow power to, uh, to come, it will not connect the circuit on. So you are able to look at that, you can either call the Twitter supply supply to, to help you with that, or you can interchange uh, the phases uh, in your system, okay? All right, so uh, go to the comment section and tell me which one of these devices you didn't understand, okay? Because in our next video, we are going to incorporate them in a circuit uh, and you really need to be following attentively. And then in the other video, we, can, we are able to do uh, a practical video, okay? So, we have a contactor too, we have a phase monitor, we have a relay that will have two, and then we have a timer that will be two both sides. So. Uh, that will really help. So I hope this video has been of a help uh, to you. Uh, thanks for watching. I really appreciate that. If you're new here, please feel free. Uh, subscribe, like, and share. And share to only those people whom you think that this kind of, you know, content, uh, you know, makes sense to them. Okay? So until next time, I really appreciate that. And by the way, guys, it's a disclaimer kind of. You know, when I bring these videos, you need to pay attention and understand them very well. So that when the next video comes, uh, you're really good.
okay? You're able to understand everything because some people really come, you know, the comment section and ask me a question in, on the very video and yet the answer was, you know, for a bit. So they watch some few seconds and then they ask a question that is really answered in the video, okay? So sometimes I look at those, you know, questions there, I just leave them hanging. I might not answer them back because they didn't watch the video to full, okay? So, thank you very much. Uh, I do appreciate. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. I'm sharing to one of those people whom you think that this kind of content uh, will do them good. So, thank you very much. Until next time, I'm out.